In order for a function f of x to be differentiable at point c, it needs to satisfy two conditions. First, f of x must be continuous at x equals c. Second, the values of the left hand and the right hand limits of f prime of x must be equal. This means that the slopes of f of x as x approaches c from the left and from the right must be exactly the same. For function f of x to be continuous at point c, please refer to the previous video. You can find a link to the video in the top right corner. In brief, for f of x to be continuous at c, three conditions must be satisfied. First, f of c must exist. Second, as x approaches c, the limit of f of x must exist. Third, the values obtained from the first and the second conditions must be equal. To put it simply, if you can draw a line without lifting the pen and without any gaps from the left to the right of the c value, then f of x is continuous at c. Let's take a look at the first graph together. For this graph to be differentiable, it must satisfy these two conditions. For x less than or equal to 0, f of x is x squared minus 4, which is concave up. For x is greater than 0, it takes 4 minus x squared, which is concave down. At x equals 0, these two curves do not meet but are separate, which means that we cannot draw a continuous curve without lifting the pen from the left side to the right side of the 0. Therefore, f of x is not continuous at x equals 0. Now let's consider the second condition. To verify it, let's differentiate f of x. For x less than or equal to 0, f prime becomes 2x. And for x greater than 0, it becomes negative 2x. When you substitute x equals 0, f prime of 0 becomes 0 for both cases. This means that as x approaches 0 from the left side, the slope becomes 0. And as x approaches 0 from the right side, the slope also becomes 0. Thus, the second condition is satisfied. However, since the function is not continuous at 0, f of x is not differentiable at x equals 0. Now let's consider the modulus graph. To make f of x differentiable, we need to fulfill two conditions. This graph allows us to draw the curve without lifting the pen from the left to the right, indicating continuity. Therefore, it satisfies the first condition. To examine the second condition, let's express the function as a piecewise function. Modulus x is equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0 and it becomes negative x when x is less than 0. Differentiating this function with respect to x, we get a slope of 1 for x greater than or equals to 0, and a slope of negative 1 for x less than 0. In other words, as x approaches 0, the left-hand limit of f prime of x is negative 1, while the right-hand limit is 1, resulting in different values. Therefore, the second condition is not satisfied, and f of x is not differentiable at 0. To summarize, for the graph to be differentiable at all points, it should not have sharp turns. If you've been enjoying this video so far, why not hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. Your support means a lot to me. Now, let's consider the graph of y equals x to the power one third. It has a peculiar shape resembling a vertical line at zero. To determine if it is differentiable at equals zero, Let's examine the two conditions visible on the screen. Since we can draw the graph without lifting the pen from the left to the right, f of x is continuous for all intervals satisfying the first condition of continuity. Now let's check if it satisfies the second condition. To do that, let's differentiate y with respect to x. The derivative of dy over dx is equal to 1 third times x to the power of negative 2 thirds, or alternatively, 1 over 3 times cubic root of x squared. If we substitute x equals 0 into dy over dx, we find that the denominator becomes 0, indicating that dy over dx does not exist. Therefore, as x approaches 0, we cannot determine the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit of f prime of x, making the limit of f prime of x non-existent. Since it fails to meet the second condition, f of x is not differentiable at x equals 0. As I mentioned earlier, this graph has a vertical line at equals 0. Just like in the equation of a straight line, we cannot determine the slope of the vertical line. Therefore, for a function to be differentiable, it should not have any vertical lines. The last problem is f of x equals square root x plus 1 plus 1. We need to check if this function is differentiable by considering the two conditions. The graph is continuous for all x greater than negative 1. Now, what about the second condition? 
If we closely observe the left end point of this graph, the coordinates are negative 1, 1. This means that x is negative 1 is the end point, and for the values of x less than negative 1, f of x is not defined. Now, can we determine the limit of f prime of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left side? Since there are no values of x less than negative 1, we cannot even calculate the left hand limit. Therefore, the second condition cannot be satisfied, and as a result, this function is not differentiable at x equals negative 1. In summary, the function is not differentiable at the end point. To summarize today's lesson, for a function to be differentiable at point C, it needs to satisfy the conditions. First, the function must be continuous at C, and second, the left hand limit and right hand limit of f prime of x as c must be equal. In simpler terms, the function should be drawable without repeating the pen, and there should be no sharp turn, vertical lines, or endpoints. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you for watching so far. I've been your mass guardian, Alex.